When an emergency situation arises, drivers of cars fitted with an anti-lock braking system will find that it helps to retain control over their vehicles and to negotiate unexpected hazards. This does not mean that normal good driving standards can be lowered just because ABS is fitted. ABS operates in addition to the hydraulic braking system. It is an electronically controlled device which helps a driver in an emergency to keep greater control of the steering by preventing the wheels from locking when extreme pressure is being applied to the brake pedal. The braking effort at each wheel is concentrated where it is most needed at the surface of the road. There are six main components to the Rover 800 anti-lock braking system. These are the pulsar rings, the speed sensors, the hydraulic modulator, the instrument panel warning light, the over voltage relay, and the electronic control unit. The Rover 800 is fitted with a four-channel sensed anti-lock braking system which incorporates a solenoid valve for each brake. It is three channels in operation. This means that each front wheel is individually sensed and individually controlled. Whereas the rear wheels are also individually sensed but jointly controlled. If either rear wheel is likely to lock on a poor surface an anti-lock sequence will be applied to both rear wheels at the same time. As the wheel on the good surface is braked less, it revolves more freely and helps to prevent the rear wheels from slipping sideways and the car from oversteering. The pulsar rings are fitted to the drive shaft of each front wheel and also to the drive flange of each rear wheel. Adjacent to each of the pulsar rings is a speed sensor. These are fitted to a clean surface with the sensor bodies coated in lead-free grease. They must always be fully fitted without force before being secured. The sensor harnesses are fitted with brackets which are labelled left or right. The white two-pin harness connectors are weather-sealed with O-rings. And fitted at the corners of the engine bay and behind each side trim panel in the boot. The speed sensors send information to the electronic control unit which is fitted to the left side of the boot. It is mounted on nylon inserts and must be separately earthed at the paint cleared point below it. The ECU receives its power from the over voltage relay or main voltage relay. This relay protects the ECU from reverse polarity and will also shut down the system if the voltage exceeds predetermined upper or lower limits. The 35-pin ECU connector normally needs some effort to remove and refit, but it should never be levered apart. When the connector is fitted, it is secured by a spring clip. The electronic control unit constantly monitors the entire ABS and shuts it down if a fault develops or if it receives incoming signals which exceed predetermined limits. At the same time, the ECU receives and evaluates signals from the speed sensors and, when necessary, outputs signals to two relays in the hydraulic modulator, which is situated under the bonnet. The hydraulic modulator divides the braking system into four independent fluid circuits by pipes connected to each wheel. Letters cast onto the body of the modulator indicate the connections for the pipes. The servo valve's relay and return pump relay 
are to be found beneath the cover of the hydraulic modulator. The smaller relay controls the movements of the four solenoid valves and the second, larger relay, powers a return pump. All ABS relays are unique to the system and must not be replaced by other relays. There are two earth wires associated with the hydraulic modulator. The thick one fixed at the rear of the modulator is for the return pump. The smaller one feeds into the modulator harness connector. Both must be securely fitted to the correct points. Although the ABS prevents all the wheels from locking, a pressure conscious reducing valve is fitted into the system as on non-ABS cars, as it is still needed to control braking pressure to the rear wheels under normal braking conditions. The Rover 800 ABS constantly monitors and compares the speed of each individual wheel to the overall speed of the car. When the brakes are applied, the hydraulic fluid will flow freely through the entire system until the ECU detects an excessive deceleration of any particular wheel or wheels. To prevent the wheels from locking, the solenoid valves relay will receive a signal from the ECU to move the relevant valve in the hydraulic modulator and block the flow of fluid to and from the wheel cylinder, thereby maintaining a constant pressure at that wheel. If the speed of the wheel continues to fall too quickly, the relay will move the valve further, opening the fluid path between the return pump and the wheel cylinder. At the same time, the return pump relay will receive a signal for the pump to start pumping fluid from the wheel cylinder back against the master cylinder pressure. This decreases the braking pressure, allowing an increase in the speed of that wheel. This increase in speed is again detected by the ECU, which stops the pump and pulses the solenoid valve, so allowing a controlled restoration of the fluid pressure. These control pressure phases will continue all the time the anti-lock sequence is in operation and can occur up to 10 times per second. There are five fuses for the ABS electrical circuit. Under the bonnet is the main fuse box with fuse K, which controls the modulator return pump. Fuse R, which controls the modulator solenoid valves. And fuse Q, which protects the live feed for the ECU via the over voltage relay. The in-car fuse panel beneath the steering column contains two 10-amp fuses, numbers 11 and 14, which respectively protect the over-voltage relay windings and the ABS warning light, which is mounted on the instrument panel. This is the sixth main component of the system. It operates in a similar way to an alternator warning light. When the ignition is switched on, the ABS light comes on. When the engine is started, the light goes out, which confirms that the ECU has completed a check of the anti-lock system and found it fully operational. If it does not go out or flashes on and off continuously, then this would indicate a fault in the system. The ECU will also check the system when the car is traveling at walking pace, causing a single kickback against the brake pedal as the ECU motors the return pump momentarily and moves each of the four solenoid valves. If a road test indicates that a fault exists, fault diagnosis for the entire ABS apart from the ECU can be carried out with the fast check. The fast check book 
has been designed to simplify fault finding and must be carefully and systematically followed. Certain basic steps must always be taken. Make sure that the ignition is switched off before connecting or disconnecting the test equipment to the system. Dirt and grease should be cleaned from hands, work surfaces and tools. Never use excessive force when removing or fitting connectors, especially when fitting the fast check harness to the ECU harness connector. Once the fast check is firmly connected to the system, the ignition can be turned on. The power light on the test equipment should now light up. If it doesn't, then refer to the possible causes in the book and take the suggested action. Should the battery voltage be down, then recharge it or replace it with a fully charged battery. If the fault still isn't cured, then check fuse Q and so on through the fast check book until the fault is found. During test C, the return pump should not be run for any longer than is necessary. The anti-lock braking system will come into operation automatically when needed at any speed above three miles an hour. There are just three main things which will make a driver aware that ABS is fitted. When an anti-lock sequence is in operation, the brake pedal will pulse rapidly under the driver's foot as the return pump pushes the fluid from the wheel cylinder back against the master cylinder pressure. And it is also possible for the hydraulic modulator to be heard when the ABS is operating. Most noticeable is the instrument panel warning light, which should go out when the engine is started. Apart from this, the driver of a car fitted with an anti-lock braking system should never know it's there until it's needed. <laughs> 